Go and see it. It's, it's still there. It's never moved. It's in the front of Newgrange Tumulus. In Ireland, the oldest uh, shrine or oldest burial mound or citadel or temple or whatever you want to call it is yeah. in County Meath, and it's called Newgrange. Uh, it's visited by so many tourists every year, and there it is. It's the, it's, it even predates the pyramids, which is, again, one of the reasons why I find these other you know, historical uh, explanations so ludicrous because yeah. the, these these buildings in Ireland actually predate even the pyramids. I mean, it should be obvious what that means. So, but in front of this great, and you can get online and look at it. I have pictures of it on my website. Uh, there is a ginormous stone that has the three famous spirals on it, and it has a lot of the other astrological symbols. And that is in front of the door of Newgrange uh, Tumulus. That stone is the original stone of Bethel. Don't they say that the shamrock and the harp you see all these so-called Irish symbols? They're meant to have come with the with the Judeans from east to yeah. west. It's all nonsense. These things existed thousands of years before the, the island was colonized by any of these people. So you know it, we can't go into every single anecdote, but you're absolutely right. These uh, these these uh, symbols, the red hand of Ulster, the, you know the six-pointed yeah. star that the Jews are using today. That uh, is fascinating. Yeah, the Brahmins have used it before. All of this was originally transported from the Solar Stellar Church of um, the Irish, and then get inseminated into all of these other religions, and then we find it coming back. But the, oh. key, the key term is that it's coming back to the homeland. It's not being yeah. brought for the first time. Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, we can just look at... Um, I noticed one thing also uh, that, that, that I think connects with the Ulster uh, symbolism there, because uh, it's uh, the, the orange order... Uh, mm -hmm. I think, isn't it the Protestant movement in Ireland? Um, yeah. But right from the William of Orange, the Orange Order. That's right. And uh, we, of course, had, uh, I don't know if there's a connection, but it's quite obvious, I think, uh, the, the Orange Revolution, which uh, recently swayed through um, Europe and, of course, even yeah. went through Israel and Ukraine. And Do you have uh, picked up on any thread here? Or Yeah, I think that was very dubious. When I saw, especially in Russia, um, it could be a coincidence. I don't know. I don't know much, too much about it. But I am very, very. I've always known that so-called, so-called revolutionary movements yes. are often just a, a device that's created by these Orange Orders and the Hanoverans and these Habsburgs and their descendants, the Windsors and all their henchmen, in order to what you might call siphon off revolutionary, true revolutionary uh, spirit that might, you know, be building up. Because remember, they know that every generation or so, there's going to be a lot of dissatisfaction, especially amongst the youth. And if they don't do something about it, like give them too much, you know, they need to give them drugs, rock and roll, and sex, and all sorts of fashions, <laughs> in order to keep them all from, you know, really saying, wait a minute, what's going on here, and getting in touch with the true picture. You know, I don't have too many hippies coming to my talks. And there's a reason. Because these people who think that they're doing good by running out in the streets and, and wearing their green army jackets and, 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 and parading in front of the great stately homes, uh, and saying, you know, darn with wealth. You know, it's not really happening because these ignoramuses don't understand how the game works and that they're even funded by the side that they claim to be hating. You know, there's a, that fantastic yes. movie you must have seen from Germany, The Educators. No, I, I haven't. Yeah, I strongly recommend that everyone get hold of that movie, The Educators, because it is a very important movie that goes into this, uh, this, this uh, zest that the youth have. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the zest. The idea of getting into changing the system as it is, is that is very necessary. And I, I'm glad that that spirit comes about in people, to say something is so deeply wrong with the world of our parents and the complicity and the duplicity of our parents. Well, what do we do about it? Well, this movie, Educators, deals with that, that, you know, it's not so easy. It's not so easy because the people that you're fighting might actually be giving you the weapons. It might not be a fair fight. So there's a certain kind of dialectic at play here where there is an entire funded semi coterie that that works to take um, disgruntled teens and disgruntled people from the universities, just like it has done in America, to get them to have revolution, so-called, with a small r, you know, and then the real revolution doesn't take place, because you're just moving the furniture around on the Titanic can, in fact, make you feel good that you're doing something wonderful, you know? This is what, unfortunately, stands in the way of some real action here. Of course, we, we have... Uh you know, you know, you get a you get a quiet the the popular uprising or even, uh, supply the uh, the solution to the problem before anyone can do something real about yeah. it. So 
it's, it's a brilliant scheme. I mean, what <laughs> yeah. do we have any chance here? <laughs> well, don't what you do we have every, to do? <laughs> every shop you go to has some full something or other, full china, full painting. We we accept it normally in the retail world. You can you can go and buy a facsimile of the Mona Lisa, but you certainly can't buy the original. You can buy you know a yeah. facsimile of uh, Waterford crystal or Ming china and laughingly take it home and go, well, of course it's not the real thing. Well, wait a minute, isn't the same thing in politics? You can buy a, a, you know, a beautiful idea like revolution. It doesn't mean it's the real thing. Exactly. They just sell it to you at a discounted price, and you run with it. You run down to the local store, or, you, know, uh, you bring it back, and you install it in your, ha- in your head, just like a machine, and you go, now I'm a revolutionary. Yeah, exactly. To be exactly. a revolutionary? Oh, <laughs> the real thing? Oh, you've got to die for that. You've got to really have the power. You've got to be a crazy horse. Yeah. You gotta be a Che. Yeah. Yeah, different, so, different it, caliber. It's, it's fascinating. And, um, we're, we're, uh, right at the, uh, right the, uh, at the bottom of the hour here. Yeah. So we can mention that, um, is, is your book available now, Michael? No, um, the, the, yeah, the Atlantis book is available. The Atlantis book, of course. Yeah, yes. you can, you know, people can go to the website and check it out. And, um, was close, yeah. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, the first edition of the, of the um, Irish, also trying to. Every time I put out a book, I am feeling in the back of my mind to also do it as a DVD because, of course, we have a problem, another problem in our world, Hendrik, as you well know, which is that people just don't bother reading. Yes, they don't have the time, and it's become quite obvious. So instead of fighting that and getting and complaining about it, people still do watch, and it's easier for them to 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 learn through that um, medium as well, especially the younger generation, because I'm never losing sight of the younger generation, who I have a lot of hope is going to be the one that, if they're steered correctly, we, we can have a lot of change. So, you know, I'm not sure whether the DVD or the book is actually going to come out first. Right now it looks like it's the book, and that's fine, Okay. with the DVD to follow. Yeah, and this, uh, tell us about these, uh, this DVD series, because it's, it's a huge... Uh, how, how many DVDs is, is there here? There's nine in all, uh, and ten if you include the Irish Origins one, if I, if I work on that. But right now what we've done is we've released six. Only six were complete enough in the series. The series is called Origins and Oracles, and it's like yes. a sort of a Joseph Campbell. I'm very inspired by Joseph Campbell and his work. So, you know, uh, so budget-wise, style-wise, content-wise, he was always my sort of model in a way. Yeah. And yeah. I think that his message also went down very well uh, to the world. All the world is familiar with his type of shows. So that was what was on my mind. And I presented it in that kind of way. And But, you know, dealing with the more controversial subjects that we're familiar with. And therefore, six were, are released, and they're going to be released to the public on the 27th of this, uh, of this year, 27th of April. Yes. It's the launch date. Yes. We have a lot of people all through the world, world interested in this. They've been anticipating this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the old story. It's it's taken a long time because I do not have any middleman in the way, and I don't, uh, you know, um, I try to produce and direct and everything myself so that there's no toning down of the information because I'm sick and tired of living in a world in which when you have the truth, because many people have uh, had the truth. Hundreds of people even have spoken about what I'm talking about. Nothing is new. It's just that when you then go to try and interface with the world, the market, they're telling you this has to go, this has to be cut. Let's t- you know cut this down for time. We're going to cut this part for content. Yes. You know, well, look, I'm from Ireland, and that that kind of jive does not work on me. You're not going to cut <laughs> anything that I've done, and I will wait for the time where I can produce it myself, and people can just come to me to get it. So this is why it took a little bit longer yes. to produce. You know, because I've been into this work for many many years, but it's taken the digital age again. You know, to get to the point where you can produce something that isn't edited for time or for content so that people have the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story so that when they're done watching or done reading, they, they, their questions are answered. They don't have 30 new questions like it is when you watch television, some of these one-hour or half-an-hour programs on the mysteries, quote-unquote, or the <laughs> unexplained mysteries. Hell, yeah, they're unexplained even after the hour's over of that show. I thought the program exactly. was called unexplained, you know, to explain the mysteries. They're leaving you with 20 other questions. Precisely. Nothing moves yeah. forward. So I'm hoping that I'm one of the first generation to say, you know, let's take the digital medium, explain the whole damn thing in beginning, middle, and end, and let's get rid of the questions. Let's start having some answers now. We're in the age of solution think. Yes. No? Yes, uh, and this, um, of course, m- many things, uh, as, as many of us know now, are, are in, in one way or another, it seems to be in a way, hinged on this uh, 
2012 date, of course, and and this is one of the uh, I know one of the activities that you will be discuss this uh, this date. Uh, do you care to uh, talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Uh, see, to me, again, let me just say that the, also it's important to realize that um, physical dates, you know, like changes on the clocks, is not really what this thing is all about. That's another way that the mind can have a cop out. That just by saying, "Okay, 2012," or "No, wait, wait, it's 2013." No, wait, it's tw- you know 207. You know, yeah. this kind of stuff is like meaningless. It, we're not talking about the shadow on the time dial when we're talking about 2012. We're talking about a phase shift spiritually, psychically, and mentally. And this is again confusing because people have been brought up on the you know the Maya end date in a bit of a different yeah. way. My reading of it is that we are already. In fact, in fact, from 1999, we have been in a countdown of 13 years. The Maya said that from 1999 to 2012, there would be the last of the 13-year, you know, countdowns of their calendar. And after that, they did. They said that everything would change. Yeah. Now, my reading of it is that it's not just the Maya talking about this. This is also connected to the end of the age of Pisces. So, if we want to talk more in Western astrological uh, jargon, and that's all it is, because again, we have to use words. We have to understand that there are 12 signs of the zodiac. And that we are now, for people who don't know about this, they can, you know, check out my website and all of that. Of but course. safe to say, we are in the end of the last sign of the zodiac. The last sign of the zodiac is Pisces. The sign that closes the year is Sagittarius. But the sign that closes the zodiac is Pisces. And we are in what is called the age of Pisces. Now, it takes a long time to explain what all of that means, but basically we are in the closing cycle. A very, very major cycle is closing. If people are not familiar with this, they just need to visualize a watch. Open one of those nice Swiss, you know, watches, and you'll see the big cogs and the small cogs. Well, time is like that. And in time, there are these large, large cycles, and then there are all the mini cycles that spin under those. This cycle that we're talking about, the zodiac cycle, is one of the big cogs. And on that cog... It's coming to its final, you know, phase before it needs to be wound up again. Now, in the end of any phase or in the end of any um, age, there is a time of cleansing. Now, we've been under that time of cleansing for, you know, a couple of, gener- a couple of generations, actually. Yeah. Uh, Aleister Crowley talked about it coming at the turn of the century. Even Nietzsche made some references to it. But specifically speaking, in 1999, it really heated up so that from 1999... Until 2012, we are in a major cleansing cycle. Now, again, people who are running around with, without a lot of psychological knowledge are you know, not fully aware of what that means. So my work and the article, Shiva and the Age of Aquarius, uh, and the DVD that's coming out is more to explain what this ending cycle really is about and that it is linked to consciousness. It's not just something, oh, my goodness, look out there, you know, the sky is moving or the, earth, the sun is doing whatever. Everything external is hinged on our psyche in the way that Jung and Freud were brilliantly to explain, that the microcosm and the macrocosm is linked. Now, we live in a culture where those um, connections between the psychic energy and the physical energy are completely lost. People could not care less about them, and even within the New Age movement, not enough has been done to explain the beauty of this ancient connection which exists, that nature and man is connected. What this means is that your consciousness your thinking, your behavior, and your subconscious drives create the fate that you, you know, that you, that comes to you. And that is the same for an individual, and it is the same for the whole of the planet. So the fate that is happening in the next 10 years is manifested on who we are as people inside subconsciously and consciously. Yes. And denial works by saying, oh, no, 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 no. It's George Bush. <laughs> it's Margaret Thatcher. It's uh, Tony Blair. It's, it's Wo 